and welcome back to another edition of Running With James. Today, we're gonna to give you our full review of the New Balance Rebel V4. Come run with me. Change your mind, change your life. That's right guys, welcome in. We are gonna give you our full review of this Rebel V4 today. Um, but before we get into that, if you're new to the channel, please take a moment to like and subscribe, and then don't forget to hit that notification bell for all things Running With James. So guys, we're gonna jump into this, and if you've never been here before, or um, if you've never seen one of our reviews before, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into pretty much all the ins and outs, um, our likes and dislikes of this running day, fast day, daily trainer from New Balance. We'll talk about the upper, we'll get into the midsole, um, we'll talk about the outsole, everything in between, and we'll tell you by the end of this video if this is something you just have to have or something you can do without. All right, so starting with the upper, the upper is New Balance Synthetic Engineered Mesh Upper. Um, and I felt like it delivered a pretty lightweight and breathable design. Um, a pretty good lockdown fit um, as far as for the laces themselves. It's a standard lacing system um, with an attached tongue. What? So yes, the tongue is actually, I'm gonna have to say it. This may be the first time I've ever said it. This tongue is perfect. It's the perfect width, depth, padding, with the gusseted tongue, it's just like Montebelle a tutti frutti, you know what I'm saying? Um, the upper itself is very light, it's very uh, it's breathable. Um, at parts of it, you can actually see through the upper. Um, it has some overlays and some extra added, uh, I guess, uh, I guess they're like plastic inserts or something between the actual uh, upper and your foot um, that add a little bit extra stability. So you've got some pretty decent lateral stability um, when you're going left and right. Now I will say that it had a very ample toe box. Um, so what I mean by that, it's pretty wide, um, plenty of depth. So your foot's not, my foot wasn't rubbing or my toes weren't rubbing the top. Um, and like I said, there was ample room. So when I first put it on, I was like, man, this, this is kind of, this is kind of wide, this is kind of big. Um, but once I got it laced down, like perfect, it was like, a, I would say a perfect fit, right? Um, the uh, hill counter is pretty substantial as well. So you can see it's got a little bit um, of give here at the top, but then you hit this overlay um, and this, whatever this plastic backing is down here and it gives you a pretty substantial uh, hill cup. Um, so your foot, your heel slips right in there and you don't have any actual heel slippage um, whatsoever. Um, has a heel uh, insert, uh, shoe insert as well. I'm just adding a little bit more padding, uh, but it's pretty, pretty light and thin. So nothing spectacular, nothing to write home, home about. Uh, but the good thing is, is that as far as the upper was concerned, I felt like you get a good lockdown fit. It's light, it's breathable. Um, I've ran actually more often than I would have normally thought that I would be in rain and things of that nature. And it drains pretty well um, and didn't like hold any kind of real water whatsoever. So for us, I believe the upper is a great upper. I think it's an upgrade from last year's version. Um, and I am a fan. All right, so let's get into the midsole. Uh, the midsole really of the shoe is gonna be the make or break for any shoe. Doesn't matter how great the outsole is, doesn't matter how great the upper is, if the midsole is not comfortable, if it's not bouncy, if it doesn't uh, give you that schwa de vie feel, then uh, it's just really something that you are not going to, or at least for me, I'm not gonna keep wearing it. Um, so uh, this is uh, New Balance's Fuel Cell Piba based mid foam, right? So it's like a blend. Um, and I found that it was very bouncy, um, plenty of give. Um, now this is pretty much their, um, kind of their speed day shoe, um, your tempo shoe, your threshold style shoe, interval shoe, or what have you. Um, I've used this shoe a lot at the track. I've used it for some speed efforts. Um, I've also used it to, uh, you know, just nice, easy paces or what have you. Um, I found that it is extremely comfortable. It's very soft. Um, if you're comparing it to say the V3, um, I personally believe that this blend of fuel cell is much softer, okay? Um, so it is responsive, it is bouncy, but there's more give, I guess. There's more more cushion. So like, you know, that kind of, you know, a lot of people like that kind of uh, cloud type feel where it's really, really super soft. Um, and I would say that this is closer to that than maybe like more of a bouncy, springy, like repulsive 
um, like race day shoe. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't have that. It definitely has that 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 uh, that pickup to it. You know, I've gone as fast as uh, like a 5:30 pace, I think, um, in this shoe. Had no problems getting up to that pace. Um, I've gone on longer runs as well. So I've, I think I've, the max I've been in this shoe is 10 miles. Um, so that's not like a super long run. Um, but usually by that time, you can tell if you're gonna have like hot spots or on your toes, or at least for me anyway, or if it's something that can make the long haul. Um, and I would say it can definitely do that. Um, it has a 34 millimeter stack height in the heel and a 28 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So it's a six millimeter drop. So. Uh, definitely not max cushion by any stretch of the imagination, but it is higher stack than uh, the V3 or actually of any of the versions of the Rebel before. So um, definitely more cushion, um, and I think you can feel that cushion, um, and maybe that's why it feels a little bit softer is because there's just more of that, uh, that fuel cell foam. Um, but I really like the foam on this shoe. Um, at first, I wasn't really sold on it compared to the V3. I like the V3, I really like the V3. Um, but the more I've wore this shoe, um, the more I think the extra stack and even that cushion has really kind of uh, grown on me. Um, so for me, I really dig the fuel cell foams. One of my favorite foams. Um, and this particular iteration, I feel like um, is positive. And you can tell a minute ago when I did that, right? You can actually like, you can see the pop. And I don't know if you can see it as much as I can feel it. But even without having like a carbon fiber plate or anything like that in it, you can still get some good, you know, pop off off your toes um, and really help you want to go fast. So for me, the fuel cell foam, it's a winner. All right, so let's get into the outsole. Um, so just like most shoes nowadays, they have strategically placed rubber. Um, so on the heel and then on the forefoot as well. Um, and they're doing this to save weight. Um, I think the weight on this uh, on this shoe comes in right about 7.4 ounces for a men's size nine or like 210 grams. Um, for my size 10 and a half, it came in right about 8.8 .8 ounces. So it's pretty light. I mean, it feels light. And actually, honestly, in hand or on foot, it feels lighter than eight ounces. Um, so uh, definitely kudos on there so they definitely that works if there's any negative i would say about this shoe i think it would have to be about the outsole right dry concrete no problems right asphalt you know no issues it, it sticks to the ground um, you can see it's like red a little bit because obviously i've used this at the track before um, but no problems whatsoever as far as like traction um, you know i've even ran on like bleachers and stuff um, I've pushed sled, so I have actually worked out in this shoe too a little bit. I probably wouldn't like suggest like lifting heavy or doing deadlifts or anything in it because it's so soft, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but I have pushed like sleds in it and it's got plenty of grip. The downside I found with the grip was when it rained, okay? So I've ran several times outside while it was wet. Um, we've had a lot of rain um, here recently. Um, and I, it, I have not slipped but I feel uneasy. Does that make sense, right? So in other words, you don't, you can normally feel if you've got good contact with the ground. When it is wet, I do feel like I have to kind of take it a little easier around the corners when I'm turning corners. Definitely wouldn't take a sharp corner whatsoever. Um, so um, it, the, the grip works. Um, I think it's fine as far as like what it's, what it's meant to do, um, but it's not the most secure grip that I've, I've tried in a shoe before. So um, as long as you're running in the dry, as long as you're running on concrete and track, stuff like that that is meant for, you're probably not gonna have any issues whatsoever. Like I said, I wanna make sure I'm clear. I have not fallen. I have not slipped um, and broken my neck, my neck and my back. Um, but uh, I have uh, I have felt a little uneasy when taking curves and things of that nature. So if I was to give it an, a rating or what have you, which I don't normally do, but I feel like I need to, if I was to give it a rating, um, say one to 10 on how uh, good the outsole is or the rubber itself is, um, I would have to put it somewhere around a six. Um, and usually I would put that like closer to nine or 10, right? Cause usually I'm like, oh, you know, it's, it's an outsole, it's great. Um, it is a fairly thick outsole. So I feel like I've gotten pretty good wear on it. Um, so I have around 70 miles, 75 miles in this shoe from slow to fast paces um, and it's worn really well I mean there's not really a, you don't see a ton of compression on the foam um, and uh, the rubber is actually held up pretty well you don't really see any kind of like any like serious wear and tear on the shoe um, and usually what you see a lot of times especially on the soles and stuff you'll start seeing some fraying and stuff um, and I, maybe it's because there is such good thickness of the actual rubber itself you're not I'm not really seeing that so um, so all in all I would say that the the outsole is good not great um, just good. All right, so what's the verdict for the New Balance Rebel of V4? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. We don't need to like, you know, keep gilding the lily. I like the shoe. It's a great shoe. It's a fast shoe. 
Um, it's a light shoe. Um, it's a comfortable shoe. The foam is great. Um, you can, I definitely would say this one over the V3, you could do like the longer, easier runs um, and not be so specific to just, you know, the up-tempo stuff. Uh, obviously, I have used it for several different things. I've used it to run long runs. I've used it to run easy runs. I've used it for speed day. I've used it on the track. I've done box jumps in it. I've done push sleds and I've even lifted some weights um, in it. And so it's like just a good, it's just a good daily trainer. I mean, I'm not even sure, 100% sure they're calling it a daily trainer as much as like it's a tempo fast day shoe, but it's really something you can do pretty much anything in. They've got some really nice colorways. I'm usually not like a white guy, but this, I don't know, I just, I really dig this colorway. Um, they have a sweet like uh, kind of royal blue one. Um, and knowing how New Balance is, they'll keep coming out with more and more colorways. Um, they have a black one that actually looks pretty good too. Um, so, you know, all in all, it's got a great fit. Y'all heard what I said about that tongue, right? The tongue is perfection. Um, it's got that uh, attached tongue, that gusset in there. Um, great lockdown fit, it's comfortable. So there's not really a lot to dislike about this shoe other than maybe, like I said, if it's super wet outside, you, may, you might feel uneasy, right? So for us, the New Balance Rebel V4, it's a must have. All right, friends, that is it for our review of this New Balance shoe. We hope you liked it, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Um, if you like this kind of content, please make sure you subscribe and share it if you have the ability to do that with people that you think might be interested. Um, if you love listening to podcasts, we also have a podcast that drops every, every single week um, with myself. We have uh, Coach Lauren and Coach Rocky, and we talk about uh, hot topics of the day. We talk about training techniques. We tell stories. We have fun laughing. Um, and really, it's just like being on a run with James. Um, and so if you'd be interested in that, you can check us out on all platforms, even here on YouTube. We, we also make videos of them. So please check us out and share it, like it, review it, do all that great stuff. You can also support the channel if you have the ability to do so by becoming a Patreon. Um, you can go to Patreon backslash running with James. Um, and we have additional content as well as opportunities to get training plans and things of that nature. So as always, guys, we always appreciate it when you come in. Remember, when you change your mind, you can change your life.